blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Preachers, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers' pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. I was down if he was dead and I'm here and I'm looking for help I don't need him I need a man who is not in trouble like me to give me help I need someone who is well to pray for me when I'm sick I need someone who is alive to give me life when I'm dying I don't need a dead man to pray for me to leave. The Lord is good. Say that. Lord. Now, say it again. Lord. A stronghold. Did you hear that? God is what? Strong to hold. God is strong to hold. When I'm in trouble. Oh my God, you didn't hear that. The Lord is good, say it. A stronghold for me when I'm in trouble. 
Join the three together. The Lord is good. Strong enough for me to hold when I am in trouble. Oh my God. Don't you think that's whom you need? That's whom I need. Look at what this prophet brought out. In the day of trouble, he's good. He knoweth them that trust in him. Thank God. Say, God know me. I trust him. Look at the 8th verse. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an altar end of the place thereof. And darkness shall pursue his enemies. Look at verse 9. As a Christian, what do you imagine against the Lord? Now that the Bible is telling you God is good, what is the thought in your heart? When I'm in trouble, do I still remember that God is good? That's what he's asking here. When things don't go the way I want them to go, do I change my opinion and think that the trouble is from God? His name is good. Or oh, somebody said good. good. When I'm in trouble, he allows me to come to him. Say good. good. But the prophet is asking, the day you need sun and rain fall, what do you think of God? Is he still good? When you plan wedding and suddenly the plan breaks down, is God still good? When you want to travel and your car breaks down, is God still good? The day you have your birthday and your car lost engine is God still good when you say tomorrow is my happy day and you lost someone very close to you is God still good what do you imagine against God don't forget he's already good don't forget, he's a strong to hold in my days of trouble. Somebody should have said amen. amen. But what do you imagine against God? What do you think of God when things are going adversarially against you? Hear what the prophet says. What do you imagine against God? He will make another end. Affliction shall not rise up again the second time. That for you, sir. That for you, sir. That for you, sir. That for you, sir. For every affliction you have experienced, it shall not have a resurrection. Oh my God. Oh my God. Whatever tribulation. Whatever trial you saw once, it shall not come back again. If I were you, I would jump up and say, my, my affliction shall not come a second time. I, I didn't say you, I'm talking of me. I say, if I were you, I would say this to myself. My affliction shall not have resurrection. Steve, that's for you. Every ugly trial you have passed through, it shall not come back second time. Oh 
Every trial you have passed through, it shall not come a second time. All the tears you have shed, it shall not come back a second time. Every shame you have borne, it shall not come back a second time. Somebody say loud hallelujah. Affliction. Your affliction. Your tribulation. Your test to your faith shall not come back a second time. Somebody say amen. amen. Many times it, it hurts us beyond forgetfulness. When we are hurt. Do you know the day God rescued me, Dr. Strader? When I read in my Bible, Jesus said, Nothing shall by any means hurt you. He didn't say it will not pain you, but he said it will not hurt you. It can pain you without hurting you. It can pain you. you Sometimes I do things to give you pain. But Jesus said, If I give you pain, Turn your pain to gain. Don't allow the pain I give you to become a hurt to your spirit. Many times, those you have helped, those you helped, turn their back against you. But he said, don't let it hurt you. When the people you try to lift, try to put you down, don't be hurt. When those you bless curse you, don't be hurt. When persons you are trying to feed give you a blow, don't be hurt. When anyone you lifted up is looking for something to put you down, don't be hurt. But know this, your affliction shall not come back a second time. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? God is asking me to tell someone, not everybody, but maybe one person. Whatever that thing is that afflicted you before, is not coming back a second time. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Has any one of you ever experienced affliction? Oh, if you are one of them, stand up. If you have ever seen any affliction since you were born. Well, I know you live in America, so there's no trouble in America. But fine. <laughs> but is there anyone here tonight? This is prophecy God brought me here for. I, I, want, to, I want to be myself. Is there anyone that has ever experienced affliction. I'm talking of something is so hurt you, you almost lost control. I'm asking you, have you ever passed through a situation sometimes you wish it was not happening to you? Is there anybody like that here tonight? Is there anyone since you were born was once disappointed. Yeah? Oh, is there anyone that have at any time experienced tears you didn't call for? Almost all my tears, I've never sent for them. They just come. <laughs> Many times that I'm in trouble, I never wrote an application to say, trouble, come to my house. I just see him arrive and I say, what are you doing here? He say, I'm already here. But listen to what the Bible sent me to tell you tonight. Whatsoever that pain, that grief, that torture, that trouble that afflicted you pain, it shall not come a second time. You may be seated. 
But I'm sent by God to tell you. Your last time of a repeated affliction was yesterday. I don't know what that means. I don't know the meaning. But I'm so grateful. My own affliction. We have no resurrection. It shall not come. A second time. The prophet continued in verse 10. Look at his verse. For why they be folding together as tongues, and why they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as stubble, fury dry. There is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. Verse 12. Thus saith the Lord. Though they be quiet and likewise many, yet thou shalt they be cut down. When he shall pass through, though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. I pray this will be for somebody. If it's for no one else, it's for you, sir. imaginable to think you can be serving a good God and something terrible happened to you and the Lord said they have imagined evil I imagine good for you what do you think of me that's what they think of you but what do you think of me that's what God asked me People have imagined evil against you. The enemies have said something terrible about you. What do you say of yourself? Because the world afflicted me and God refused my affliction. <laughs> learn, sir, learn how to turn your scars to stars. Never you let the devil have the last say about your life. Why? Affliction shall not come back a second time. How many of you can say amen? amen. I just pray that what I'm saying tonight will help you. Whenever you find yourself in trouble, know that good is coming. You didn't hear that. Anytime you see yourself in tears believe that cheers is coming anytime you see yourself with obstacles know that miracles are coming so oh, somebody should have said amen to that why affliction shall not come back a second time god is not a wicked god God does not reward our good with evil. When we do something good in his name, when we do something good for him, he doesn't say, because thou hast so served me, thou payest thy tithe, thou givest thy offering, therefore shall thou be in trouble. God is not like that. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him somebody say amen. amen look at this verse 12 i want to repeat it again to your hearing hear this this is prophecy for me and you thus says the lord who is speaking here i'm asking you who is speaking thus says the lord though they be quiet and likewise many yet thus shall they 
be cut down. When he shall pass through, though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. May I ask you one more time, just by the lifting of your hand, how many of you have passed through trial once? How many of you have seen pain more than once? Oh, in Africa we see pain every day. How many of you have been short of money sometimes? Oh God, you are in America, God's own country. Oh yes. How many of you have at any time received reproach? How many of you at any time have received insult, accusation? God asked me to tell you, I permitted that one. But I will not permit any other one. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? The one you experienced before, God knew it. But he said, no new one is coming. Did anybody hear that? All right. 13th verse. For now will I break his yoke from off thee. Oh, somebody stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Oh, Rama, Mama, Mama. <laughs> you didn't hear that. I hope you hear that. <laughs> I hope you hear that. Steve, did you hear that? God says, that thing that caused you shame, that thing that gave you tears and became a heavy load and a yoke around your neck. I tried this afternoon when I got home to push this message aside and God said you either preach it or I kill you <laughs> tell everyone afflicted the load shall be taken from their shoulders <laughs> put your two hands on your shoulders and march forward here now quickly place your two hands on your shoulder please no matter how big you are get up and come forward just rest your hand on your shoulder I don't know what you believe but I believe that when the Bible says, Thus says the Lord, that's enough for me. Do you know what it means to have a repeated heart? When you close your eyes, you can't sleep. Do you know what it is sometimes when there's food on your table and you have no appetite? I'm talking of me. I don't know about you. Do you know what it means sometimes when you are looking for joy and sorrow comes and you don't know what to do? You see wrong, not because you are wrong, but because wrong wants to see you. But God said, I should tell you, affliction is not coming back a second time. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. When 
it first came not because you were wrong that's what God took but he says he says here God is speaking for now will I break the yoke the yoke from off that weight the heaviness the load that press you down God says off so lift it out of your shoulder Oh, Baba ye kele boho, shela la lama, morambo ye kela baria, shila baba hakendo lo bohe kele. I don't know how long it has taken you, but I have joy to tell you: the yoke is off your shoulder. The yoke is off your shoulder. The yoke is off your shoulder. The grief is off your shoulder. The tears off your shoulder. The load off your neck. Somebody say, Yes, Lord. I have seen many yokes. I've shed many tears for preaching the gospel. But I will never forget the day God told me, Benson, my son, from this night, the yoke is off your shoulder. And from that day, I say this to you from that day till now. Any time I see yoke coming, I say, God, you told me it's off. You bore my grief, you carried my sorrow. It shall not come back a second time. Somebody say, Hallelujah. This is prophecy for someone tonight. Maybe the load has been there since you were born. <laughs> Maybe that load has been so heavy, you don't know where to turn. It could be marriage load. It could be business load. It could be ministry affliction. It can even be family inherited. But the good news is this. I, the Lord, take it off. <laughs> the Lord Himself. From the day God told me, the load is off my shoulder. In the ministry, I used to have happiness. When there's something good happening. But God said from today, the joy, the joy I give you, I live with you. Not as the world give, give I to you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, <laughs> you are the Lord carrier. You are our burden bearer from the shoulder of your servants. Affliction is gone. Affliction is gone. Affliction is gone. In the name of Jesus. Off. Off. Off your shoulder. The load is gone. Oh. The load is gone. 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 
The Lord is gone. The Lord is gone. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the Lord is gone. 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 He's gone. He's gone. In Jesus' name, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. The Lord is off from your shoulder. In Jesus' name, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Let it go. Let it go. The Lord is gone. He's gone. He's gone. In Jesus' name, the Lord is off your shoulder. Now, from this night, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let it go. In the name of Jesus, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. In the name of Jesus, off your shoulder, let it go, let it go, let it go. I remove the load in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, let it go. Every load, leave. Every load, I yeah. take it away. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. In the name of Jesus, the load is off you. The tears off you. The pain off you. The sorrow off you. Let it go! Let it go! Let it go! In the name of Jesus! 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 Then go! Body leave! In Jesus' name! Be healed! Be healed! Be free! Be free, 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 let it go, let it go, off you, off you, off you, off you, off you, off you, let her get up, let her get up from the witcher. Come on, move, get up, pull the chair back. Go with your feet. It's gone in Jesus' name. Let it go. Get up. Stand to your feet. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Take the witcher back. In the name of Jesus, free from your shoulder. Leave. Leave. <laughs> oh, Rabba Mayakada. Let it go. Let it go. Off your shoulder. Off your shoulder. Off your shoulder. Let it go. Let it go. Come on. It's not yours anymore. It's gone from you. It's gone. In the name of Jesus, gone. It's gone. It's gone. From today, you are free. Let it go. Free. <laughs> free. 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 Come on. Let it go. In Jesus' name. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Thank you, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Peace. Peace. 
in Jesus name hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, wave your hand and say hallelujah. Say with me, I'm free. The yoke is broken. It's taken from my shoulder. I'm loose. I'm free. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Listen to this covenant. May I ask all of you right now to stand to your feet. Everybody get up. Get up and hold somebody's hand left and right. Get up, get up. Usher, force them up. Force everyone up. Arise and shine. Your light is come. Rise up. Get up. Hold someone's hand left and right. Say I'm free. I didn't hear you. Louder. Amen. All right, just quiet now for a minute. Open your eyes and lose your hand and look at me straight. God told me from 315, 245, yeah, what it was this afternoon. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Carried load is off. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying. Listen, prophecy is more than laughing, prophecy is more than falling down, prophecy is more than rolling on the ground. Prophecy is, thus says the Lord. 
And one thing I've heard God say to me, to you, the yoke is off your shoulder. Somebody say loud hallelujah. It may shock you to know how many years this man and I have served in the same border region. But three times in the past I've come to see this place. Only last night God revealed to me to tell him this walk will not hurt you. He has used you to establish it. It shall be sustained. No man will destroy it while you live. And from this night, the yoke is off your shoulder. Oh, lift your hand and say, the yoke is off my shoulder. Say it loud, the yoke is off my shoulder. Say big hallelujah. hallelujah. Now listen to two more promises God gave me to give you. Then I, I finish what I'm here for. Hear this. And the Lord had given a commandment concerning thee. Commandment. Not a suggestion. Commandment. Concerning thee. That no more of thy name be sown out of the house of thy gods will I cut off the graven image and the molten image I will make thy <laughs> oh God <laughs> from this day tearing you to pieces no more You are no more you of yesterday. Carl, your name changed this morning. Your name changed this morning. I want to do something tonight before we close. If his financial burden is off. If his married burden is off. For the load off your shoulder. This message and a collection of other messages are available at Iwo Media Services. Iwo Media Services, inspirational, world-class production. Success stretches people. Success strengthens people. Success brings joy. Success brings happiness. So many people want success. So many people have achieved success. Quick riches without maintenance is worse than inherited poverty. Some of you know how to get there, you don't know how to remove them. But how do you maintain success? Is it in the buying of stocks or investing in real estate? To maintain a balanced success, you must try to spread yourself beyond what you have ability to do. Find out from this life-transforming teaching by Archbishop B.A. Idahosa on how to maintain success and you will always be on top in life. I'm speaking on the subject today, how to maintain success. What we are giving power to subdue cannot relegate us. Is anybody hearing me this morning? When I came to the ministry, Bishop Mike, the greatest complaint was that the church was a nuisance. 
incapable of getting a new car, incapable of building a church, especially the Pandora's car. They went to church to cry and did nothing. And then the, that was the Christians in the east. And it was in the west. After sweating for three hours, when the pastor wants to preach for 15 minutes, they sleep for 12 minutes. In my time of coming to the ministry, no pastor in Nigeria, Pentecostal, had a car. And I got worried and said to God, if that's all you can do for those who answer your call, don't call me at all. <laughs> my brain and my IQ is too high to be detained. And said to me, what I have esteemed, who can diminish? <laughs> and he said to me, if you answer my call, I will make you an example. I met the gospel in poverty. I took it from mediocrity to prosperity. <laughs> Find out whether you believe it or not in Nigeria. I was the first to preach that to prosper is the will of God. To be happy is the will of God. To have a car is the will of God. To marry a beautiful wife like this is the will of God. To give your wife microphone is the will of God. For her to sell the book is the will of God. Don't give me 50 copies from somebody in the will of God. I was the first to preach that you can be a Christian and be happy in Africa. I was used by God to introduce prosperity instead of poverty. But since last year, my, my bishop, the Lord told me, the next thing we are going to venture into is posterity. <laughs> we are entering a new era. Of what you and I do now, our children will meet it and say it happened in my father's time. Can somebody raise hand and say, I will do that? I will do that. May 1985. Reverend Peace, hear me. God woke me up at 2 a.m. He said, From now, don't do what will die when you die, do what will last you. And I called the whole body of our ministry and said, Hospital will be built best in Africa. Schools will be built best in Africa. Today we have 94 schools with 43,000 students in Nigeria. Today, you are aware, you've been to this campus, we have the first Christian university in the continent of Africa. Posterity will outlast prosperity. Each one of us must not only build a city and a tower, we must build what our children will meet. Because the Bible says, good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. Somebody say big hallelujah. hallelujah. Who among your friends said to you in the last one week, this bungalow we are occupying now is too small for us. Who among your friends challenge your yesterday's maximum to compare it to become today's minimum? Who? Who is your friend who said to you, The Lord bless you last year with 10 million naira, and I'm glad to tell you I made 100 million? Who is that your friend? And that's who you need. Manifesting as a son and a daughter of God. This group, we are the first to say, if God can live in heaven, we can build a tower to meet it. And God was not frightened by their tower. I will soon tell you what God was not too happy about. Not about the tower, not about the city. But listen to verse 5, everybody. Verse 5, read it with me loud, everybody. One, two, go. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower with the children of men build it. Stand to your feet, everyone. Please help somebody next to you to say, let's stand together. Let's stand together.
carry your wife up or if your baby is carrying you, carry the baby now. God came down. I'm not sure you are hearing me. Say with me, God came down. God came down. To act. To, to see. To the city. And the tower. And the tower. With the sons of men. Have built it. What is that thing you have done that attracted God's attention? How many towers? How many cities? Bishop, mind, God left his throne, that's the Bible, and came down. Oh, that that day would come. That the grace of God will push you so far that God will say, that's my son, in whom I am well pleased. Oh, that that day will come, and I say this to you all in Lagos, that your ambition will not be to make a living hand to mouth that your ambition will not be for two ends to meet I was telling them in Benin on Friday when I landed, I arrived in this country two days ago I said people who fight to make two ends meet can never meet the end of my foot and my head they don't meet my front and my back they don't meet my ambition is not to make two ends meet but to make my life meet the need of people for to be rich is to reach other people. A massive wealth for your personal consumption is poverty in disguise. You didn't hear me. Say with me to be rich. R I C H is to R E A C H people. To be rich is to reach people. All of you live in a town. The most religious town we have in Africa, where you can buy handkerchief, you can buy holy oil, you can buy towel, you can buy broom. You can. You are looking for many, many, many magicians that are playing your oracle in the name of miracle, and it doesn't last. To tie handkerchief in your car is not the will of God. Faith does not come by handkerchief. Faith does not come by bottle of oil. Faith does not come by broom in the back of your car. And faith does not come by falling down and rising up. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And I'm glad that you have preached the word here, challenge, yet we stood the time. January 4th, next year, which is about five weeks away, will be 40 years I started preaching. I've never added anything to Christ and I need nothing outside him. Anybody who know me 30 years ago, I've never sold broom to make a living. I've never sold oil to make a living. I've never sold handkerchief to make a living. I've never sold any sellable candle, camphor, red beret, green beret, anything sellable. Nothing can be added to the grace of God. And what God cannot do, no man can improve on it. If you love the Lord, say big amen. Came down, God came down to see, to see the, city the city and the tower and the with man built. What have you done to attract the presence of God? What has God used you to do? Remember, the Bible said the land was played. When you bought this land a few years ago, in your absence, Dr. Boye just brought me here. And he said, can you advise your friend about this place? I said, I will not talk to him until he finishes. <laughs> the swamp, the swamp, the swamp in this area can make any man backslide if he cannot front slide. <laughs> the million you sank in the floor here to get the ground out of water could have caused the weakest man to say, where is God? More than 10 times I have come here without seeing you and I didn't look for you. I make sure you are not around. And when I'm coming, I put the first card with the red spectacles so that your people don't know who I am. 
We are here today because one man said it can be done. Yeah. Become a possibilitarian. Help yourself. Don't go to Presbyterian church or become a possibilitarian. Yeah. Sit down and say amen. Yeah. You can become a possibilitarian. Let me hear say, all things are possible. To him that believes. All things are possible. To him that believes. Let me hear say, nothing shall be impossible. Matthew 17, 20, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. All things are possible to him that believes. Luke chapter 9 is possible. Matthew 7 says, whatever we ask, we can receive. John 13 says, it's possible for us to have the kingdom of God. And these men and women built a city and a tower. And God was attracted. And God came down. Now I'm nearing my message. And I have five minutes to finish. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com the world database of Christian preachers to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Hallelujah. Many of you are saying the reason 
God cannot use me. It's like I don't have ability. God is not looking for your ability. He's looking for your availability. And when you can avail yourself to Him, He will make Himself available. Get ready for my...
The need of the hour. As members of the family of Trem enter a new phase in this ministry, God sent me this verse to give to you, Bishop Mike. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. Say to your next person, We are going to be one. In language, in language, in action, in, action, in, ambition, in ambition, in effort, in effort we, shall be one. we shall be one. God said. And this is the verse for you, Okonkwo. Add it to your motto for 1998.
is broken. Oh my baheki la baya. For you and your wife, the limit is broken. For poverty, the limit is broken. From I don't know what to do, the limit is broken. From down cast, the limit is broken. From today, nothing shall be restrained from you. Somebody say big amen. amen. Nothing. Say nothing. nothing. One more time. Nothing. Shall, shall be restrained, be restrained from, me from me that I want to do. I want to do. That is the gift God gives me. Amen. To put your trend on today. Amen. Bow your heads and join hand with somebody. Ephesians 2 20 says, Nothing you determine to do, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. How much you want to be determines of how much you want to be. No man can limit you from today. This is the first breakthrough that man had. Children of men build tower and build city. And God said from now, nothing shall be restrained from them. Who they determined to do. And I am glad I have the apostolic audacity and divine capacity to put in your life the power to do what you want to do. Is there anybody who wants to build a house? It's possible. Is there anybody believing God for a wife? It's possible. Is there anybody believing God for a husband? It's possible. Is there anybody believing God for money in their bank account? It's possible. Is there anybody who wants to be richer than where they are now? It's possible. Somebody say, Hallelujah! Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Here at Trem, the ground of your power, I bow my knees. So thank you for Bishop Michael Konko and Peace of Konko and for the ministry you entrusted to their care. And now, Lord, according to your word to me to prophesy and say, nothing shall be restrained from them. And for every member present and absent today, the limit is broken in the name of Jesus. The limit is removed in the name of Jesus. The limit is removed in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. I bow my knee to ask you, Holy Spirit, to visit your people with divine ambition. As I rise to my feet, I leave poverty behind. I leave sickness behind. I shoot everybody up in the name of Jesus. Declare you prosper in the name of Jesus. Be rich in the name of Jesus. Be well in the name of Jesus. Be alive in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Lose your hand and raise it up and ask God for something tangible. Lose your hand and raise it up. Ask God for a miracle. Ask God for a miracle of your own. Ask God. The things that are impossible with men is possible with God. It's 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 lift your hand and work it and praise God. Ask God for a miracle. Ask God for a miracle. In the mighty name of Jesus.
Open your mouth and ask God for something. 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 Your light is come. Has taken away my reproach. I stand here to say anything that will limit to you is removed. I stand here to say if you ask God three things today, He will give you four. If you ask Him for one, He will give you two. He will be done, He will be done, He will be done, He will be done. Will be done. Let me hear that it is done. In Jesus name Amen. Amen. Amen Take your seat Oh do this with me All my limits, All my limits are, removed. are removed The Bible says He are the sons of God The time for sons of God to manifest 25 years ago, Bishop Mike, 1972, our total headquarter income was about 12. Well, let me not miss the figure. We were not getting up to 100 naira. About 12. Well, let me not miss the figure. We were not getting up to 100 naira a month in our headquarter church. Everyone you saw dance just now, either in university, finish university on the way to university. This year we have 317 people on scholarship. 317. I was told it's not possible. The job you do is not as important as the God you know. Some of you say my job is very bad. It's not true. God is a good God. Psalm 106 verse 1. God is good. Some people say the reason I'm poor is because I live in the village. Transfer me to the most remote village under the sun, up to Djibouti, where they have 240 goats and 200, 200, 240 human beings and 420 goats. I will still build a tower and a city. I believe that you cannot do more than what your mouth confesses. And I've come to ask you, mount up as you mount up. Use your mouth to change your situation. Amen. Something new is about to take place in Trent. I left home and Bishop Mike, I have to confess my sin to so his hand. This is one of the few hands under the sun. Blessed. Of course, when they hear me, sir, this hand is blessed. And anything I touch, surely must be blessed. I want 500 of you. That I don't say millionaire, it's a billionaire. <laughs> you better hear me. Only one thing I've not been able to do in 40 years. Point your hand and say, What is that? What is that? You are a coward. Ask me. What is that? Say it louder. What is that? Hold your hand there. Point it. Yes, to me. 
pointed wickedly to me and said, what is that? The only thing I have not been able to do in 40 years is what I don't want to do. Anything, anything. Bishop Mike is aware. I told him, since 1972, I've got three aircraft for the ministry. I dash it to people. But priority is different. They are just blessed to ride planes and blessed to build poor people's lives. That's why I'm in Benin. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith.
spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high and the low in society. A man who rubbed shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing and it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And the uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edebo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edepo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting moving on from one project to another and often when he started a new project we whites we oibos would say why is he doing that we couldn't see the vision at all we thought hmm, this is very funny but then sometime later we would realize oh yes okay i see why he's done that now and i was a muslim that i gave my life to christ in Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop Indahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onitsha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open-air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, and God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onitsha. And we went to put posters all over Onitsha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform, and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there, and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, actually I went there in 79. My class started in uh, 1980. And uh, 
they went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Niederhose University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. And um, people of faith are few in Britain. But if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane will move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy sure Dausa. We said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft, lifted his I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me. And you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the sea. We have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, if the house was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Bini? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? I was scared, I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I'll not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. He called him, the plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here, there won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned, his name Chief Ebohu, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. 
Then daddy said or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974, 75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was, I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the Aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland and when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. In Dahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, in Dahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. Oh, <laughs> 
What's up, boo? Monkey, what's your boo? And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, waded through the crowd. And he came and I said, ah, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. And he said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't don't make a mockery of your God. He said, No, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead and I said listen don't make a mockery of yourself the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal that sick raise the dead I said what I beg what did I talk Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? I send it to your throne. What's the girl's name? I will send it to I said, It's in Warata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the outside. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father had said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. The 
then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> and then they died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. With him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, What is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? You said the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive. My father, Benson Dalsa, is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 
I, I, I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two guys and two boys and six guys. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you. 
Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'll like you to know that he was also my spiritual father. Please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people. Let this video go viral. Remain blessed. Hello, this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa, his early Christian ministry testimony. As a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on the farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven the room was filled with the presence of god as benson fell to his knees before the lord wherever you want me to go i will go he prayed through the night renewing his vows to god and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation after his call benson launched into ministry work preaching from village to village the gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 
1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he was also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of Bishop of, Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981, from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robert University in March 1984. He also received another degree, he also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supertax. So winning was in Daosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He walked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa. According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching millions as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager student from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters, sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa's evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. 
He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminars have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Dowser. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998 now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your, your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. 
His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa, his wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the Church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.